So I think that was a good thing. And I kind of did a two things. So I have to do my weekends, which weekends we basically make it's an hour. I have about 30 minutes teaching and that within, then there's like worship and announcements, all that stuff on the other 30 minutes. I yeah. typically go for more minutes. Um, and then Thursday nights become like my core, like disciples. Oh, That's right. like my mid week. Yeah. And that usually, that usually averages around, that will average around 250 ish. And the weekends, like I said, about 500. So about the, those 250, that's like, I get up there and I'll go for 45 minutes to an hour. Um, we'll go deep into text. We'll do conversation. We'll do right. interview. That's the, that's the group that I did like a, a, a seven week series. And we I had my friend, um, different friends come up and my friend Brett Kunkel came and did a whole thing on faith and sexuality for one Thursday night. They did, you know, we, we, that's the night we do that's, I don't make that the weekend. Yeah. Uh, Cause the weekend is, yeah, the weekend's more like, Hey, you just, this might be your first time back to church in your whole life since right. you're a kid. And so it's gotta be, I want to make it challenging yeah, and reasonable and encouraging. Uh, but I'm definitely not going to use the weekend as the time to like go deep into something that came out in the media or, um, yeah, it's good. I, I had, I had a question for you around that. It's good. You brought it up. Cause, um, it's definitely something I've been, part of the reason I've been reading Andy Stanley is because I've been throwing this around a lot more, I suppose, looking at my own philosophy around mm. church and, and what it really means. And, you know, so often we can just naturally think that church is, is Sunday, where yeah. obviously the ecclesia is, is yeah. you know, much more than a service. But how do you, how do you kind of do both i suppose how do you create space for what you might call a more evangelistic approach where it is open like you're saying you've removed obstacles for people and i think you know a lot of the mega churches part of the reason they're big is because they do this so well they help people feel comfortable remove the obstacles so that they can actually get to the truth you know they approach with lots of grace and then at the core is the truth because you know that only the truth can set us free and you've got to get to that i think a lot of people maybe misunderstand bigger churches thinking that they're somehow compromising or they're somehow yeah, yeah. Where, where, they're, where they're not. I mean, you read these guys like Andy Stanley and man, they're as hardcore as anyone, but I think yeah. they're just a lot cleverer at bringing in what they would call the unchurched. Yeah. Um, yes. But then I suppose you've got to work out what is Sunday for, because if it's for those people, it is a different message, but if it's for the insiders, then you can preach long and you can go hard and you can do whatever you want. And Christians are incredibly uh, tolerant of bad sermons and long meetings and yeah. waffle and poor presentation. It's, we're amazingly patient what people will put up with, you know, when they love God, you know, you wouldn't put up with that at a restaurant or in a no. movie, but you go to church and sit there for hours through some rubbish sermon and, you know, it's all great. And so, yeah, so maybe do you have some thoughts around, around that? Yeah, I think um, for me, you know, we, we've got a lot of, we've gotten some criticism the last couple of years because, you know, take for instance, Easter, you know, we, 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 you know, we go, all, we go all out for Easter and we let a lot of the young people decide like how we should do it. And so usually it's like ridiculous amount of lights and a lot of music and drop curtains and dancers. And, and, you know, I'm like, I, I couldn't care less about that stuff, but there is something to be said about celebrating you know, yeah. so why not go big with something like that and get the chance to kind of show people that, um, you know, Christ's resurrection is a really big deal to us. And so we're going to spend money on celebrating because we want this you to remember the fact that he came back from the dead. And that's, yeah. that's, you know, life after life after death now, right? That's our yeah. hope. So I think that, uh, so there's been some of that. I, I think for me, you know, obviously for me, the way I'm wired, I would like shut the doors, grab the grab the most hardcore people, create schools and start pumping them out, you know, like tell everyone yeah. else, go somewhere else, you know, yeah, yeah. I think that that's kind of my mentality, you know, I'm, I'm like, the same. Yeah. yeah, that's, I mean, that's just what's in my DNA. That's what I was mentored in for years. Yeah. Uh, but what I've come to realize is that um, we can't do that because a lot of people just aren't more people. A lot of people just aren't there. And the people that probably would show up to those classes are people that are really into Christianity, but they're not really helping anybody. Yeah. Like they're like really committed to grow. But then we're like, do you even have a friend that's not a Christian? Well, no, I'm just <laughs> all about God. It's like, okay, well, that's not going to work either. Yeah. You know? yeah. So, so, so Sunday, what I, what we've done is Sunday is going to be like those hardcore people. 
we want them serving the whole group then. Right. So you're here, you're meeting, you're taking, you're buying, we're giving you free tickets to get people free coffee and breakfast and sit down with them. You're yeah. ushering people. You're like, you are the table setter. You're the host there. It's loving right. strangers. You're welcoming them in. And then Thursday, come and we'll go deep. And we have a team night we do as well that we go, right. we go, we go after it. And so I think right now, I, I, I can't speak for Australia, but right now in America, um, we are, we are, we are, looks like we're towing the line with really going post-Christian. You know, I think people say we're already there. I wouldn't say we're already there yet. Not as a whole nation, maybe in pockets, but definitely not as a whole nation. Um, because you obviously have the um, African American, Latin, and Asian church that's growing fast, and so they're yeah. not. Some of those statistics are very white centric, you know. Yeah. But um, but I would say that uh, if people are coming to a church, I don't care what they're doing on a Sunday. Like right now, we got to see that as a win. Yeah. I don't like you know. I think that's where I'm at. Like they're coming. Yeah. So I don't know why, because there's so many things we're gonna do but they keep showing up. So let's just make it appropriate for them to come in and hear about Jesus. Yeah. So we've had this talk because, you know, I was approached uh, last Christmas by two, my uh, a mom and said, Hey, can you talk to my daughter? And her daughter came to me and said, Hey, can I talk to you for a second? I'm like, yeah, sure. And as I'm talking to her, we didn't, we didn't even start talking. This other girl comes like bulldozing through the chairs and just stops the girl from talking, gets right in my face and goes, that's my girlfriend. We're lesbians. Are we welcome in your church? And I, I right away said, heck yeah, you are. Like everyone is welcome to learn about Jesus, you know? Yeah. Like, yes, come every weekend, please come, you know? Now, am I saying you're going to be a leader? No. Are you yeah. going to probably come and hear me, hear things that you don't agree with about what I've said? Yes. But if you want to come and learn about Jesus, you, you got to come. And so at this stage of the game, I feel like there's just not a lot of places that people can come and even learn about God anymore. Yeah. I, I think we assume that everyone's, everyone's learning it. But then when you sit with a really serious Christian and realize they don't even know what they believe, how are anyone else going to? Yeah. So, so for us, it's like, let's make it, we will ne I will never water down truth. Nah. Like clear as day. I've been straight up. Like we value human life. I'll tell the bigger story of our value for human dignity, where it comes from. I'm not just going to hammer the abortion, yeah. but I'll start with the huge picture and then come down and go, and that's why I'm against abortion. Yeah, yeah. You know, you know, we value marriage. I'm not just going to say, I don't like gay marriage. I'm going to do the big picture of what marriage is meant for the world. And then to come down to and say, and that's why it's one man and one woman. And does that offend you? It should. It should offend all of us. Mm -hmm. Because sin is in our heart. And the gospel is going to offend the sin in our heart. So yeah. I'm, maybe you're offended about the gay marriage thing. But I'm going to be offended about other things. It's, yeah. it, it is what it is. So, so I think what I'm realizing is you can have the open door celebration loud music fun and you can bring the truth but i think people are wanting the truth not in the words that they've heard explained to them before yeah they're wanting to hear it wrapped in the bigger perspective and so a lot i feel like a lot of what i do is reminding people what it is from a place in scripture that they haven't heard any heard about heard anymore you know yeah. like oh well then that makes sense like oh like bride of christ man and woman like these are all signposts of what god's doing and yeah. Like it just, it, 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 it clicks different. And so, but the challenge like anyone is going, get them to 30 minutes, make it fun. Let tell, I'm a storyteller. So I naturally can bring people into the story, but I'm, I, I used to be like poo poo on the bigger churches. Now I'm like, we got to get these churches as big as possible. Like, because yeah. it also bigger churches do provide opportunity for people to hide out a little bit at first. Yeah. You know, I, I had a friend that said, um, you know, if you think of the church as like an aircraft carrier, you have like the top guys calling all shots and making the whole thing work. But don't forget about the guys in the bottom that just peel potatoes, you know? Yeah. But I'm always like, get the aircraft, get the army generals. And, and then eventually it's like, yeah, but some people just need to peel potatoes. And their, their role is just, if they're not peeling potatoes, those guys aren't eating and they're not. So it's just, I think for me, it's been learning a different um Different levels of people's really involvement. Good. It's really good. I think, um, I think you know, it's, it's a little bit similar to some of the thoughts I've been having and I suppose addressing in myself a little bit because I'm, I'm looking from our Australia context 
you know, which is very similar to America post-Christian. Um, you know, most people, even a lot of Christians, are very secular in their mindset, understanding of um, people, um, culture, politics, you know, what I'm meant to be doing with my life, meaning. Um, but then trying to find that. And another book I've been reading recently is one of Tim Keller's ones. Um, and it's just brilliant stuff. He's such a genius, but he's just yeah, talking about what he did in New York with Redeemer. Yeah. And just really saying that it wasn't the model because that's a lot of the stuff you read is, is models mm. or the methods, but he's really saying we just understood you know, the hearts and minds of New Yorkers. And then we just spoke in a rational mm. way full of truth, but, but helping them overcome obstacles in their head that a New Yorker has in their head. And I think that's a big challenge for churches. And I think I've been challenged a lot the last couple of years, not to just preach uh, in a way that I like, but to actually preach in a way that, you know, the audience that I'm preaching to is going to be able to understand Jesus better and grow in their faith. And now I think the next iteration that I'm looking at is not only preaching to the insider audience to help them, but also preaching to outsiders that may be sitting in the congregation. And do we start to use Sunday more as a way, like a funnel that it's, it's a lot more open. Yeah. Uh, like you're saying, it's, it's yes. therefore it's probably going to be shorter. It's probably going to be a bit more jokes and fun, but it's going to funnel down to truth. And then hopefully feeding people into these more discipleship programs, courses, the Thursday night thing. Um, so yes. I like what you're saying because I think I think it's not about a model or a style. It's more about well, what's actually going to help the average Aussie dude who's probably a tradie with tattoos. Could come? Could he come to my church? Hear something and go far out. That challenged me. That helped me a bit. I actually might come back next week. Yes. You know, and it's not like church is this two hour weird thing with all this lingo inside a language I don't understand. Yes, that's huge. That's and if huge. we can still have, uh, I love your Thursday night thing because, and you know that we've got, you know, some great discipleship stuff and yeah, that, of course. you know, um, and we've always had that insider, insider stuff. And I think that that's really important. You don't want to lose that, but you've got to have a funnel. You can't just expect people to walk into churches anymore. Your average person doesn't even know that David and Goliath is a biblical story. No. It's just, isn't that a business term? A big yeah. company, a little... Yeah. And the guy just wrote a book on that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 